All right. We're back. Yeah, we're here. So my name is Roman Norris and this is Alison Kemi. Hello. And the way that we met is really cool. Yeah. Do you want to say a little bit about that, Alison? Yeah, so <laughs> we met, well, I first sent Roma a message to say, help, <laughs> my baby cries and he doesn't sleep and I'm not sleeping and I'm crying and what can I do? And then um, you sent me back the most beautiful message to say, oh, I hear you, I know all about this, what do you need? Um, and I had no idea what I needed. <laughs> So we messaged back and forth for a little while before we spoke on the phone because um, I just kept thinking everyone says like the only alternatives are either that you do cry it out, put your baby down, all of that stuff, or you just have to hold them and feed them and know that this will not last forever. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got in contact with you, my son was, I think, I think I first contacted you when he was maybe just before he turned one. But by the time we actually spoke, he was 14 months. Yeah. And by that point, I thought, okay, well, I'm all for feeding your child and holding your child and it won't last forever. But this has been a long time and I have really not had any sleep for a very, very, very I long mean, time. I mean, your situation was dire. I'm, you know, like, <laughs> I've worked with lots of parents and heard lots of stories and yours was really up there with one of the most extreme ones that I'd come across um that was that was full-on what you were doing there yeah it was tough it was tough so we he did nap twice a day and the first nap we would rock on a chair and I would hold him and I would feed him and but he would do that thing where he would almost fall asleep and I'd be like oh he's, he's nearly there he's nearly there and then I can just sort of relax and switch off for a bit while I just sit here and hold them. But then he would just suddenly ping open again and then he would start crying and be like, oh, just feed more, feed more. And he just wouldn't do it. And then eventually I would get it, but it would, you know, he would only sleep on it for a little while on me before he would wake again. And it just felt relentless. And then in the afternoon, I would take him out and push him, push him, push him <laughs> round the streets. I did it all winter in Glasgow where it's rainy and Oh, day for a little while we just pushed him up and down the streets and then um, watching for him to just fall asleep and he, again he would just do that almost no I'm not going to do it and then at night he was waking five times a night usually that was normal for us um, and quite often when he would wake up he was waking screaming and for hours and that was with him in my bed my husband was out it was just me and him and I was feeding him and he still would wake up and just cry and cry and cry and it was brutal just brutal yeah so this Facebook live is for you if you are out there with um struggles with your baby napping um if you feel like you need to put your baby down sometimes maybe you've got other children maybe you know there's so many reasons why maybe you've got a sore back um and perhaps you don't feel entirely comfortable with the kind of cry it out solutions that are being offered which you know i think is a good instinct we um we've got evidence that leaving babies to cry when you're not there um, does not have such a, a positive effect on the developing brain. Um, so that's not what we would advocate here at Hand in Hand Parenting. Um, and that said, if you've reached breaking point and got to that point where you just felt like you had no other option or, you know, you've been given information by somebody saying that that was the best thing to do and you you know um we're just doing what you were told uh it's okay our babies can recover from from things that have happened that weren't ideal we all can humans are built for that um 
but yeah we want to offer that there is another perspective on what you can do with your baby other than just holding them all the time yeah so that was such a revelation for me on to figure out how could I connect with him in a way that was more sort of more deeply connecting more soothing for him because although I was holding him all the time I wasn't particularly soothing a lot of the time I was trying I was feeding I was rocking I was singing but my whole energy was please just go to sleep and it didn't really connect with him on this I'm here I've got yeah. you we're both absolutely fine mm -hmm. and it, that took time for me to build and you really helped me build that mm -hmm. um, and all of the ways that we did that through play and connection and listening to his feelings lasted it's lasted it didn't just see us through those difficult days as a baby and a young toddler it it's still how we, we work on sleep now if he goes through a bad patch like last summer when he was stung by wasps and had nightmares for a while we used pretty much the same approach tweaked for older children and it still helps us now so that even though he's been sleeping through the night no problem at all for you know a good couple of years now we can still use that and it's still helpful I'm so delighted to hear that. And you mentioned, you talked about listening to his feelings, which um, might sound a bit strange, the idea of listening to a baby's feelings. Do mm -hmm. babies even have feelings? Um, <laughs> <laughs> quite often the sort of conventional thought on babies is that anything they don't remember um, doesn't affect them. But actually we're starting through the kind of more recent developments in neuroscience to discover that that's not actually the case. Um, a baby's limbic system, their emotional and social center of their brain is actually fully mature when they're born or probably even while they're still in the womb. So in terms of their emotional capacity, their ability to sort of read what's going on interpersonally they're on a par with you and I um which was a revelation for me I I think when I first I mean I I think I had an instinct that our babies have a consciousness and they see and they're watching all the time what's going on um but that they can actually feel and understand feeling uh as you know their their processing of that is as sophisticated as an adult and um, that was kind of a revelation for me yeah that was new understanding for me when you told me all about that and when I found hand in hand and had been reading about it even though it was actually quite obvious you know and it's not only babies like mine that find it difficult to sleep but I could see when I tried to take him out and I could see oh these other babies are looking quite happy and contented and my baby's looking pretty cross <laughs> and frustrated and angry and maybe frightened and I could see he had a lot of feelings but for me that just made me feel like well what am I doing wrong why is my baby like this have I have I is it because the birth was so difficult is it because I've been struggling emotionally what's what's the problem here what what have I done to have a baby like this mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not what we set out to do, is it? We all, you know, in our minds, we set out to give our children everything and our baby is going to be the one that, you know, gets gets everything they need and we're going to do everything right. And, and then life happens and, I don't know, maybe you're very depressed during your pregnancy or something upsetting or traumatic happens or, you know, medicalized birth ends up being not such a fun experience for you and your baby mm -hmm. um well yeah anything can happen in the early days and just as we have feelings about how all of that went which also go on to have an impact on our babies um our babies have have feelings about what they've been through too um and just to say, in case anyone is tempted to go down a hole of self-loathing and, and misery <laughs> at the thought of this, because we all feel desperately guilty about what's happened to our children. Um, 
none of this is actually your fault. There's a bigger system at play here that is is bigger than you. And um, we're all doing our absolute best given our circumstances and the curveballs that life throws at us. And the good news about it is that we can all really recover from, from these hard moments. Um, yeah, we, we had to do quite a lot of work on your feelings of guilt. Is that okay for me to say? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, feel of guilt. Um, I really, yeah, pregnancy had been hard. The birth had been extremely hard. Yeah, it's hard to talk about it without becoming emotional because it was one of the most difficult experiences that I'd ever had. And I had no idea how to recover and heal from that. I was getting support, support that was available, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really healing from it. I was just sort of treading water. Yeah. And of course I found hand in hand, I found out about listening partnerships. I don't know, people can be nervous about that, but I was like, that's what I need. I need someone to listen to me mm -hmm. and not tell me something that, you know, because that was the problem. I would have people saying, well, you need to do this with your baby. You need to put them down. You need to do this. And I'd be like, but, but that's not helping me. That's not helping me. And I can see it's not helping him. And when I came to you, you were able to just listen to me and hold that space for me and also just show me how to heal that and realized that this was actually part of a much bigger thing that I was not aware of. Um, so many earlier hurts in my life that I hadn't healed. And we, you know, we were able to go into that. And it was a huge healing journey. And what I then realized was that the things that I was finding difficult to connect with my son were things that I needed to heal. And we healed that. We were able to listen to his feelings and heal those things. He became such a happy, contented little toddler. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to enjoy our time together and play and laugh and feel close to each other. Which, even though I'd been doing the whole hold your baby, keep them in a sling, don't put them down, feed them, mm -hmm. care for them, I'd been doing my absolute best with all of that. And I, I didn't feel that and it didn't feel like it was helping him. So... I, it wasn't I had to stop doing those things but it was, there was something else I had to add into that this emotional awareness and understanding that that just changed everything for us and it's no surprise to me that it brings emotion to think back over that time it was you know it was one thing after another that you were hit with and it was it was a kind of brutal yeah. existence that you had to go through day in and day out with really not enough support and yeah. Yeah, so I'm sorry for that. And I'm sorry for everyone else who is f feeling like they're wading through mud when they have a, a baby or a small child. And quite often what happens is that just the very act of having a baby and going through that process brings up all the unresolved feelings from our own early experiences that we've, we didn't even know were there, as you discovered. Um, and you mentioned listening partnerships. Can you say a little bit for anyone who isn't familiar with that term? Sure. So I was, um, I'd read about how it could help you to take your emotions to another parent who was willing to swap time with you. So we would listen to each other. Um, and I tried to set up a regular listening partnership, but didn't have much success with that because my baby would not sleep or wake up <laughs> and thankfully found um, a listening challenge that I was able to take part in and then had access to a pool of listeners where I could just as soon as he fell asleep I would phone someone and say this day has been so hard he wouldn't fall asleep and, oh, and just talk about whatever I needed to talk about mm -hmm. and then I would find it when I, he did wake up then I was able to be much more calm and present. I'd, be, I'd been heard. I felt connected. 
I wasn't isolated anymore because the isolation of being a mum whose baby is not sleeping. I mean, the isolation of being a mum anyway is quite hard when, you, when you've got a young child. But when it was so difficult for us to get out the house or to do anything, it, it just transformed everything and really made it different, um, a different experience once I was having somebody, even though I didn't know them. And it was different people quite often for me, but that that just changed so much what I was able to bring to the relationship that we had. Mm. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm just thinking of all those people who have recently had their babies during the pandemic. Absolutely. I mean, must just be horrendously isolating mm. if you can't get out to meet friends or baby groups or, you know, I, I just can't even imagine it. So um listening partnerships are a wonderful antidote to that because you're creating these kind of meaningful connections with other parents and the most important thing that we need out of that connection is somewhere to just dump out all the feelings about how hard it is um or how wonderful it is even yeah. to share yeah. that with someone yeah um so if you're interested in listening partnerships you can find a listening partner on our facebook in our facebook groups we've got one called hand in hand listening support and we've got one called hand in hand listening support uk if you're in the uk like we are um and you can just post in those groups just say you know i'm available this time uh looking for someone to swap some listening with and um, we've got guidelines on how to get started and you can find all of that information. Um, so <laughs> we're talking about how to put your baby down for a nap today and that process probably starts by just having a look at maybe how you're feeling about the situation, how it feels that it's hard to put your baby down um, or maybe feelings about actually you'd wish you could just hold your baby and you've got other things that you have to do, um, however it is for you, and maybe feelings about some of the things that have happened to you and your baby. It's a great place to pour out any of those feelings of guilt or shame, um, worry, and um, that's really the best place to start with this process. Um, and yeah, I think you've been referring a bit, Alison, to the kind of promise that is inherent in attachment parenting, that if you just breastfeed them and hold them and co-sleep and carry them in a sling, they'll be a happy baby and they will um, grow out of needing you quite so intensively and and of course they do um, but as we discovered that wasn't entirely the whole picture because there was stress in the system yeah and there needed to be somewhere for that stress to make its way out. Um, and sometimes those behaviors, um, those sort of practices of um, just stretching to meet your baby's needs actually mean that you're sort of almost um, preventing them from, from being able to um, move out of that stress pattern because they're kind of compensating by like has anyone ever experienced their baby crying or being upset and you offer the boob and it's almost like they're kind of glugging back the tears like they're they're just like frantically breastfeeding to comfort themselves and of course breastfeeding should be a comfort milk contains lots of comforting chemicals sleepy making chemicals and of course it's a it's a bonding soothing behavior but there's an additional element where we're sort of culturally we've got no space for feelings and actually when our babies cry sometimes they're expressing those feelings they also express their needs a lot of the time 
Um, but sometimes they just need to be able to let rip to say how frustrated or how frightened or, um, yeah. Um, and I think for me, it just felt very overwhelming that the thought of this tiny little thing could have big feelings like that. I, I didn't want them to have those feelings. I wanted them to feel safe and happy. And the guilt was so overwhelming that he didn't feel like that, that it made it very difficult to be there. Um, and that, that was why, for me, the listening partnerships helped because I would bring my feelings of fear and frustration and notice that if someone listened to me as I cried, I actually felt better. Mm. And once I started to experience that for myself, I could think, well, actually, maybe if I listen to how he's feeling, I'll, I'll notice something. Let's see what I notice. And I was started to be brave enough to give it a try for a little minute or two. And I would sometimes notice that, yeah, he, he did seem more relaxed if I was able to listen to his feelings. Mm. And that, that started to make a huge difference to us. So how do you listen to a baby's feelings? Your baby's crying. And what, what do you do that actually constitutes listening? Because obviously we're, we're all listening. But what, what do you mean by that exactly? I would just hold them and offer warm eye contact. Quite often his eyes were shut tight. <laughs> but I would be there and just say, I'm here. The words are not important, it's the tone and your body language that's important. And that was what was the biggest change for me because I noticed once I started to do that before, my body language had been tight. My voice had been a bit like I'd been singing soothing songs, but and I'm not very soothing tone of voice. Yeah. And trying to just relax that and be like, I'm here. Oh, this mm. is so hard. Mm. Yeah. So we're talking about the limbic system in terms of the emotional social center of the brain. Um, and actually our babies are kind of hyper vigilant to our cues that signal safety. Mm -hmm. And most of those are through our nonverbal expressions. So if we're kind of gritting our teeth and going, I'm here it's okay but we're actually feeling really stressed because the sound of a crying baby is stressful then that's going to convey this kind of lack of availability like what they're seeing is mom's stressed um and that's why the listening partnerships are actually the really key element to this because until you've had a chance to unwind from your own stress you actually can't offer that gorgeous soft open you know open facial um tone and soft voice and soft eyes that Alison was showing us just there um and yeah you might be able to notice all the ways in which you've been kind of jiggling or kind of giving them a dummy or um you know, passing them over to someone else or pacing up and down or all the things we do when we feel uncomfortable with our babies crying. And of course, you know, society tells us that a crying baby is an unhappy baby. So we actually, you know, we, we want to soothe our babies because we think that's what they need. Um, but yeah, as you experiment with this, you might notice, as Alison did, that they seem to feel better and more relaxed and kind of closer to you and more open. You might find that after they've had a really big cry, they'll just be sort of cooing and looking into your eyes and you feel really connected and there's a closeness that wasn't there before. One of the, the biggest realisations for me was when I learned that if you stop their crying, you're not stopping their feelings. The feelings are still there. But if you're able to listen to the crying, then you've heard their feelings and their feelings, they move through their feelings mm. and they get to the point where they've sort of resolved it. And that, you know, I, I had a lot of experience <laughs> of that because there was a lot of crying. So lots of opportunities to practice. And when we started 
it was only for short periods because I was still not fully trusting that this process would work. But once I did learn it, then it, it, it was, and I've seen this with other parents as well, once you get it, you know, oh, wow, I actually do have a superpower to make it better. But it's not by actively stopping the crying, it's by letting it happen. Um, and it is, it really does make such a difference to your relationship and to how they can heal from the difficult things that have happened to them. Yeah. So I guess what we're saying in a roundabout way is that um, when your baby feels more relaxed, when their nervous system can drop, probably what's going to happen is that you can put them anywhere when they're asleep and they're going to be able to stay asleep because they're overall more relaxed. Yeah, um, and that was what we started to notice. So I started with the listening partnerships and I started to notice that I could maybe, I was more relaxed and he was more relaxed. So that it was not easier on every occasion, but it was easier on more occasions for him to fall asleep. And it was easier for him to stay asleep. And that started to be better. But because I did have a lot of feelings that take, took a long time to unpack, it was when I started to work with you that I started to notice that I had all these rigid rules about sleep that it had to be this type of light and this type of noise. And, you know, we had to do all these relaxing things that I thought was going to be relaxing to make it happen. Sounds really relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was not having the, the desired effect. Mm -hmm. And so we really worked on how to build that connection in other ways which, like you said, was just sending this message of safety, of availability, which didn't need to be done through holding and feeding. It could be done in other ways, through play, which we can do with even very young babies. And once we started to do that more often, I was like, oh, OK, now I get it. And, you know, many people do that play um, very naturally. I would notice other parents doing it with their babies, you know, swinging them or peekaboo and all of these lovely lovely ways we connect with our baby um, and it wasn't quite as natural for me but I you know I was able to learn how to do that but even those people who find it natural sometimes they weren't even aware of what effect it was having and I think once you've got the information on what effect it can have you can just use that more strategically to help your baby to nap so mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess what we're saying is start with your own feelings and then just use any opportunity to listen when you think your baby might be letting off steam emotionally. So obviously you want to check that you've met their physical needs if they're crying. You, you know, you don't want to withhold food if you think they might be hungry. Um, you want to check that they haven't got a soiled nappy and um, if they need picking up maybe pick them up um but in your arms um when you know that all those other needs are met if they're crying uh you can really listen to them and your capacity to be able to do that is going to increase pr proportionally to how much listening you receive yourself um you'll be able to respond with that soft warm present kind of tone that Alison was demonstrating um and yeah um the really cool thing that we didn't say is that Alison is now one of our hand-in-hand -hand instructors she went off and and trained and so we are actually going to be offering a talk together on sleep is that next Friday yeah, next Friday at 11 o'clock UK time. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this live and you want to know more about sleep, and this is actually for parents who have kids um, of any age who are experiencing sleep difficulties, uh, not just babies, um, then you can sign up. We will put the link in the comments. I also want to check whether we've got any comments um just gonna have a little look yeah so um, one of the things we're going to be talking about during that free talk is the the ways that we can use play which you know when we when we're 
dealing with babies trying to nap, then listening to their feelings is going to be one of the, the places to start. And we're probably having lots of lovely connected time with them anyway, because they're little babies. But as we get older, it's great to find these wonderful ways we can use play. Um, and we're going to talk a bit more about that, as well as setting limits, because obviously when our children get older, they might want to have just one more story or... <laughs> Have a drink, mom. Drink, or don't put the covers like that and leave them like this. And there's lots of ways we can use play and limits to help with that so that we know that we're meeting all their needs and we're also getting good sleep. Oh, my page isn't loading, so I can't see if anyone's been asking any questions. But um, what we'll do if you've asked a question in the comment, we will respond um, in the comments there. Um, what else? Is there anything? Have you got anything else coming up, Alison, that you want to take? Hand in? comments, but it looks like it's all hand in hand comments. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all about how to get the listening support, how to find listening support. So fantastic. Anyone watching this is welcome to ask any questions and we'll do all yeah, that. Put them there later and we'll come back and check. So. Um, is there anything else that you want to plug, Alison, that you've got coming up? Uh, no, I think that's all. I'm going to be announcing a starter class quite soon, but I don't have not fixed the date. So great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the starter class is like the signature course from Hand in Hand, where you can learn all of our five tools in in depth mm -hmm. uh, to connect with other parents. Um, I've got one of those coming up in May, so I'll, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you for giving this your attention. Hope it's been helpful. Um, I want to thank you, Alison, for your epic story and the epic work that you did. It was just, it was amazing to witness. I, I've never seen anything quite like it. <laughs> oh, and thank you so much for all the support that you gave me through that time. And especially when I was just so tentative and nervous about reaching out and what might this woman tell me to do with my baby and I wouldn't like it. And you were just so like reassuring and let me take it at my own pace and built up the knowledge um, and understanding for me as well as just giving me lots of support so it really helped and turned turned it all around for us so thank you bless you well it was such a pleasure and um yeah love to anyone out there who's struggling and uh really hope that you can find your way to getting some really good support for that yeah. okay well bye from me yep. bye thanks very much for watching <laughs>